Hi, this is Jack Lifton, and today I'm, I'm speaking with Peter Hagendorn, and he's going to tell us about his very, very interesting potash project in Utah. Uh, Peter, uh, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I, I'm fascinated by by your your project because it's it's been completely overlooked in the in in the American politic, uh, and the fact is that uh, human beings require food, warmth, and safety. Number right. one is food. Uh, I, I think that personally that your project is much more important to the uh, American way of life than uh, all the cell phones and television sets in, in the universe. And yet that's all we hear about is electric cars and uh cell phones and, and and toys like that and very few people in in america today understand anything about where our food comes from uh, a century ago i believe 90 percent of americans were involved in food production today it's three percent and that's a vanishing three percent so please please tell us what what you're planning to produce in in utah and and why it's important and then tell us where else, where we get it. Because I understand from you that America imports almost all of its needs of this very, very critical mineral. Please go ahead. You're a hundred percent right, Jack. Um, potash is an essential mineral. Life on earth does not exist without potassium, phosphate and nitrogen, NPK. Um, potash is a growing um, commodity. Uh, the, the demand is growing, ever growing. Uh, Southeast Asia, South America, um, these are very, very large um, growth areas of, uh, of potash consumption. Um, the, the problem with the post-COVID world now and with the war with, um, uh, with, between Russia and um, Ukraine, Belarus is basically off, offline, which is about 40% of potash production. And so is Canada's about 40% of potash production. So, so everybody is now concerned about national food security. Um, in the U.S., um, you've got shrinking acreage as well, arable land. Uh, so you've got to get more and more yield. And to get yield, you need fertilizer. And potassium chloride, which is what we're producing, will be producing, um, is a naturally occurring um, fertilizer. Plants cannot grow without it. So every time a, a, a crop leaves the is harvested, it takes the potash that's or the potassium that's in the soil, and it's got to be replaced. So um, our project is really the largest deposit close to production for U.S. production. And by being there, we are saving the local market somewhere between $150 and $225 a ton of freight costs from Saskatchewan. Um, from other places in the world, it'll be far, far more. Uh, if you're producing in Gabon, for instance, or in somewhere else in Africa, you're looking at hundreds of dollars uh, uh, per ton. So the marketplace um, suggests that this is a good place to be producing potash. Will you be able to produce and make money? What's your cost? Well, uh, we're still doing, I can't give our hard costs at this point because we're still doing what's called a PEA. But um, but because we uh, the the economic attributes of our deposit are very, very favorable. Um, it's a very high grade deposit. It's running 43% KCL, which is very, very high grade. It's got very, very low insolubles, very low uh, carnalite. And it's at a depth where potash already is, uh, it has a temperature, ambient temperature of 68 degrees. Potash goes into full solution at 62 degrees. So we don't have to incur those heavy natural gas costs of heating the brines that are that are sent down into the cavern to uh, to dissolve the pot the, the potash to bring it back to the surface. So our production costs will definitely be in the lower lowest quartile. And where is your deposit located? It's located in what's called the Four Corners um, of Utah, uh, Colorado, uh, New Mexico, and Arizona. So it's good area. Nice and Anything good area. in that area brings brings to my mind anyway, NGOs and Native American restrictions yeah. on their land. 
why or why not are, are these not issues for your company? So our land package, we've got about 90,000 acres. Um, 58,000 of it is BLM. And that's, you know, that's admittedly um, very difficult to permit. But by the same token, it is acres that we control that nobody else can get uh, by having those applications. The bulk of our land is made up of, for production, is made up of a combination of state and private mineral leases. Those are readily permittable. And the state of Utah is very, very aggressive on developing resources. The state land trust, uh, which controls the leases that we're going to be starting production on, um, that 5% royalty um, and 15% royalty on the oil and gas and things like that, that the state controls in their leases, that finances their school system. They have probably the most sophisticated and best school facilities on the planet. So they're very aggressive on permitting um, uh, projects that will generate generational um, you know, wealth and revenues for their, for their education system. When will you be producing and how much? We are doing plans for regional production, um, which will probably take us to about a half million tons. It'll take us a while to get there. We're going to do it in increments and in modules so that each module is a standalone um, economic unit where we will not be risking capital that we will be left stranded. We are initiating um, a drilling program that we'll be starting, in a, we're permitting for right now. Um, the drilling will get us uh, two geologic holes, one will, uh, which will give us um, resource um, data again, and will bring us from uh, 280 million tons of inferred to a measured indicated number, but they'll also double as production holes and disposal holes. So the, the one hole will be used to develop a cavern that we'll be starting this year, and that'll go an awful long ways to, uh, to actually doing a minimal amount of production, but we'll be able to tighten up all of the economics, um, the chemistry. And uh, so by this time next year, we hope, or maybe a month or two later, but we hope to be in uh, limited pilot production of you know somewhere around 15,000 tons, and then we'll okay. be looking for bigger units. One last question. What's mm -hmm. the American domestic demand and what percentage of that do you, do you expect to be able to capture? So we've got a two-pronged approach. The U.S. currently uses about 11 million tons. They only produce about 3% of what they need. Um, as I said, we're hoping to be a regional player of about a half million tons. But what we're also hoping to do at the same time is to show that this is a, a tier one deposit that if somebody else with a bigger marketing footprint where we're going to do four or 500,000 tons, a major corporation could do a million, two million, three million tons, and we'd be a target for them to take out to do that. That's really the, the approach that we're taking here. Well, thank you for that uh, very, very interesting discussion. And uh, I, I wish you luck because I like to eat. Yeah, we all do. Thanks, Thanks Jack. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time.